Good morning, church. Come on, stand to your feet. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. You all look beautiful and lovely today. We thank God for you. Come on, put your hands together. sure she's watching online so mom i love you happy mother's day my wife she's hugging and loving everyone like she always does happy mother's day to my beautiful wife but let's keep on worshiping church come on let's try that again (laughs) let's try it again here we go here we go put your hands together come on
Praise the Lord. All right, you can be seated for a minute. We're so excited to have our North Elliott kids and Kids Junior in here with us this morning. They've got a performance uh, coming up, and uh, so, so, so glad they're here. That's tough to do, so, so. So I have a saying around here, maybe you've heard me say it before. It's technology is great until it's not. <laughs> right? Everything is wonderful until it's not wonderful. And uh, so with that being said, I, for some reason our lights decided they wanted to uh, go off, and I didn't want to give anybody an epileptic seizure. So we, we, we opted to just turn them off. Um, so that's, that's what's happening with that. But we got a surprise uh, today, or at least my wife did. Our daughter and son-in-law and grandsons are here with us for Mother's Day. That's always awesome. And I'm not real good at surprising Twyla, just, just so y'all know. She usually figures it out. So she was over baking biscuits uh, in the fellowship hall. And so I told her one of her displays fell to get her to come over here. So, Father, I'm sorry about that lie. Need to repent of that now while I'm thinking of it. Um, so she comes in hot, man. I mean, she jumps in the vehicle. She comes in hot underneath the awning, and so she got surprised. So I'm, I'm just glad anytime I can pull off a surprise. Any, any other guys, you feel like your wife figures it out before you get it surprise done? Thank you. I'm not alone. I'm not alone in the room. All right. So awesome, awesome. I told, I told my daughter, I said, now if they try to surprise me, I'll be thinking somebody's coming, and then nobody will come <laughs> for Father's Day, right? It's like nobody will come. Um, but that's all good. It's all good. It's all good, you know. Um, I love my life. I love, I love getting to do it with, uh, with Twyla. She's a great mom. She's a great uh, first lady in the church. She's a great kids' church mom to all of these, these kids, and you're going to see that here momentarily, but I want to say a little bit of something about what we've done for you today as a church. So, we have biscuits and honey, right? So, we want you to, to be sweet as honey today. So, be sweet as honey today, mom and, and kids and everybody else. So, if you didn't get one coming in, wrap one up in a, in a napkin, take take it with you. Say, man, you know what? We need some bread at the house for dinner. You know, snatch up about four of them and pocket them or something. Uh, we don't need any biscuits staying staying around or hanging around. And there's to-go packets with that. But there's also a gift for all of the moms. And it's a little jar of local honey. And it has a little honey, what is that little wooden spoon thing? Honey server that goes that goes along with that. And so we wanted you to have that. And on the outside is a little tag that speaks of one of the attributes of motherhood. And so we want to give that to you as a gift today. And so you can pick that up on your way out while you're pocketing a biscuit or two or pursing. You know, just, just you know, so those of you that don't have pocket. Somebody finally, somebody's like, yeah, yeah, I got it now. Um, but anyway, we're, we're just glad you're here. We're honored that you're here, and we're just wanting to move into this time of year, kind of starts out with, uh, with mothers, and then we've got graduations, and we've got babies coming, we've got three ladies in our church that are, that are pregnant, and so we've got a graduation party next week, we've got a baby shower coming uh, in June, and then one in July, and we'll skip, right, we'll skip. August, and then have a September, whatever, whenever it is. So get ready to buy baby gifts. So is any of that coming up on the screen? I'm just talking away, and I'm not seeing anything of that. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Some of the technology is working today. So there, there's the graduation party next next Sunday. It's 5 p.m. You don't want to miss that. And then, of course, the Stamper Baby. Somebody say the name again. Aria, I always have somebody say it, and then I can say it, but I can't say it if I try to say it. So I, ha I will have to learn that for sure, Aria. We're so glad. And uh, you're ready, right? So I'm, 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 are you ready for the shower? <laughs> First baby, you don't know what you're ready for, but you're ready. All right, okay. So anyway, we're excited about all the new births. We're excited about what God is doing in the church. And if you don't have a church home, 
we want you to make this your church home. Or if you've not been in church in a long time and this was your church home, make it home again. There's a lot of good things that are happening here at, at North Elliott, and we want you to be part of that. And we want to be a blessing to you, and we want you to be a blessing to us. And so I'm going to receive the offering, and so our ushers are coming right now. If you're an online giver, you can do that at northelliot.church. If you're a text giver, 844-492-9984. If you're an in-person giver, the ushers are going to be serving you here momentarily. And as we kind of move through, after the ushers get through, Pastor Twyla will come. The kids are going to get set. And if she needs to explain anything about the performance, I'll give her an opportunity to do that. All right? Are you ready to pray? Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to be in your house, first of all. To be in your presence. To be here with mom or for mom. God, we just pray that everything that is said, done, we pray you bless this offering. We pray you anoint our children. They're such a gift. You said they were an inheritance. You said they were arrows in the hands of a mighty man. They're our future. And may they go forth farther, stronger, more anointed than we ever have. Just bless this day. And at the end of it, mom will know that she was honored and she was appreciated. We thank you for all that you do for us. In Jesus' name, amen. couple more things set up but we've had fun putting this together so we hope you enjoy it as much as we've had fun right guys it's been fun and we want our moms to know we love you and honor you today It's a song from my mommy. How do you spell it? Give me an M. Uh-huh. Oh. M. M. Give me an O. Give me an O. Oh. 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 Give me an M. Oh. M. M. What's that spell? Oh. If you have a stroller, but you're still a rock and roller, you're a mom. You're a mom. If you're tired of doing dishes and you know who all those fish is, Your work is never done. 
Once again, to all the mothers, we love you. We appreciate you. As we make this transition, will, we, will you stand with us for just a few more minutes? We're going to worship. I'm very thankful for my wife, who's a wonderful mother. Once again, she was hugging people when I was talking about her, but she is a wonderful mom, and I couldn't ask for anything better than you, so I appreciate you, and I love you. So Let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that you're in this house. We thank you for the joy that is in this house, Father, the, the joy we've experienced so far. Father, let this joy be our strength, Lord Jesus, as we move forward, as we lift our voices and worship you, Father. Do an amazing thing in our midst as we yield to your Holy Spirit, Father God. Have your way in this place, in Jesus' name. Amen, church. Just keep on worshiping.
it rain in this place. You are faithful, Lord, to your promises. We're so thankful for that. Father, as a church, we, we have a heart of, of thankfulness to you and gratitude for all the things you're doing in this church, Father. We're seeing that move. We're seeing you move like you promised, Father. We see it, and we walk in it, Father, by faith. So Holy Spirit, have your way. Do something special in each and every individual in this place, Lord. We sing with a heart of gratitude, Lord. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness to us. We thank you, Father.
Let's sing it one more time together, church. And so I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a It's not much, but I've nothing else fit for a king except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Just raise your hands to the Lord. Just thank Him. Just thank Him. God, I thank You. Thank Him for His presence. Thank Him for His touch. Amen. Now just begin to thank Him for your mom. Whether your mom's still with you or not, would you just begin to thank Him for the mom that He put in your life. If you're near your mom or near your wife or near a mom, would you just once again thank her for what she is and what she does before you're seated? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, these kind of events uh, don't happen with, without a lot of help. So thankful for Pastor Reuben and the team, especially his help in getting the song together for the kids. So thankful for the North Elliott youth today for serving and helping and for Pastor Austin and Cami who are allowing uh, Twyla to be in here today and going back and helping Pastor Sky with the kids. We just appreciate, appreciate that. And so God has just put around us a bunch of people and all of the uh, adopted daughters that help uh, Twyla decorate uh, out in the foyer. Just wonderful to have this group of young Ladies, Sky, uh, Cammy, and Maddie, she's joined the crew. She's helping us now. And so, they, didn't they do a wonderful job with the display? And <laughs> Amen. So, have I missed somebody? I don't want to miss anybody. Okay, I can do. Yep, all those people that jump in, all the Wednesday night helpers that have helped to get the, the kids program together, thank you uh, for that as well. Amen. So I've given myself a challenge today. As much as our church is in, uh, in revival and a revival spirit, I mean, I was praying. I said, God, I want to preach revival moms. <laughs> right? just, just get after it, right? And uh, so the more I prayed about that, I felt like God kind of uh, changed my mind about that. And so I want to have fun today. And so today is going to be a play on words with honey and bees and pollen and flowers and beauty and all of that. So if you want to give me my title slide, how to be a great mom, how to be a great mom, amen. I want to give you a quote. I don't know who the author of this quote is, but I think it sums it up and it's about a mother's love. A mom loves you first, then forever. I want you to think about that. Your first love was your mom. She loved you first and then forever. And so I've kind of looked at this and I've said, okay, if that's a mom's love, then what is love? 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8 says, love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious. Love does not brag. It's not puffed up. It is not rude. It is not self-serving. It's not easily angered or resentful. Not glad about injustice. Man, I want to tell you, moms set things right, don't they? There's injustice in the home, right? <laughs> right? But rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things. Love believes all things. Love hopes all things. Love endures 
all things. Love never ends. The old King James says love never fails, but love never ends. That's what that meaning of that word in the Greek is. Love has no end. Right? Love never ends. And I know we use this passage a lot for romantic love and for weddings and wedding ceremonies. But it is most fitting when we talk about it as a mom and the attributes that a mom has. And so if you'll pray with me, we'll see where God takes us today. Father, thank you for this message. Thank you for these scriptures. Thank you for this word. Would you minister to every mom in this place? Would you minister to her where she is? Give her comfort, encouragement. Let her know that she's seen, that she's heard, and that you are near. And that her love is not only appreciated by those of us here on earth, but her love and expressions of love to her children and to her family are seen and heard in heaven. I pray that in Jesus' name, amen. So a mom's love never ends, and the definition of love never ends. So my opening statement then is this. If that's true, so when motherhood gets overwhelming and you feel like the unsung hero of your own home, just remember to love and be Remember to love and be. The first be that you need to remember is be you. God doesn't need you to be anyone else. God created you unique. Psalm 139 is for you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made because every mom is first a child. In your mother's womb, in the inmost secret place. God made you unique. God gifted you uniquely. And God took your unique gifts and talents and abilities and he placed you in the family you are in to be the mother that you are. You don't need to be envious of anyone else. You don't need to be jealous of anyone else. You don't need to see anyone else as better than you because you are the perfect mom for your family. Not a fake you, not a made up you, but the real you, the true you. That's who your family needs. And with that lead in, that brings me to my second B. Be true. Now oftentimes in the world you will hear them say, be true to yourself. That's not in the Bible. Be true to God. Be true to your creator. Be true to yourself in the sense of who you are in God is your identity. Not who you're not in the eyes of the world or in the eyes of others. Be true to God. Be true to your creator. Be true to your family. Be the genuine you. Right? That's what this means. This word true you know, I, I used to work on bicycles when I, was a, when I was a kid, and I hung out at the Swin bicycle shop. And they had this little tool that they used to tighten spokes. And you know what that process is called? True. Making the wheel true. And on each side of the rim, they had these little bumpers. And they would tighten and loosen until that rim rolled perfectly straight. Listen. The only person that's doing any adjustment on you is God. When you are true to God and God, and you let God make you true, you don't need to worry about what other people say you are or you aren't. Don't let the world shape you or mold you or, or bend you, because if that's the case, you'll be out of true. So be true. The next thing I want to say to you is, number three, be free. Be free from any comparison of others. Now you say, you already talked about that. But listen, I've done this for years. On Mother's Day, 
we like, okay, what to preach? What are preachers going to preach? What are we going to say? Where, where is it at? Oh, the model woman, Proverbs 31. Have you ever read what this lady does? Does she ever sleep? Does she ever eat herself? I mean, she's baking and cooking and selling and buying. And she's like, I mean, there's like 12, 13 chapters of all the, I mean, verses of all these things this woman does. And so to all the women in the building, I want to say, be free from the comparison to Proverbs 31. This lady does not exist. She is a compilation. She's a composite. You take all the good attributes of womanhood and you put it together and that's her. So be free from the comparison of even a passage of scripture or, or, or a pastor who's a male who probably shouldn't even be preaching on Mother's Day. Right? I had a good mother. I, I, have, a, I have a great wife who's a great mother. I mean, I... I've seen motherhood, but I've also seen what women go through when this comparison thing comes upon them. You don't have to be anyone today, but who God wants you to be. So be free from comparison. The next thing I want you to be free from is shortcomings. Be free from your own shortcomings. I, I don't know anyone that doesn't wish they were better in some area. And moms are included in that. I wish I was a better baker. I wish I was a better seamstress. I wish I was a better housekeeper. I wish I was a better whatever. And if you're a full-time, I mean, like, like you work outside the home, you have a full-time job, and you have a full-time job at home as, as a mom, Be free from any of those shortcomings. Listen, if it's a banquet frozen dinner, bless God they got dinner. Right? Come on now, somebody. Say, your kids say, is it, Mom, there's no food in the house. Yes, there is. It's just in the form of ingredients. Right? Put them together, right? <laughs> and you will have food. So I want, I want all of it, be, be free of comparison, be free of shortcomings, and then also be free of criticism. This idea of criticism, and oftentimes it even comes from our own family. And sometimes maybe another mom in your family. And they think you should be this and that, and you can, you know, just listen, listen. Be free from that. Be free from somebody else's criticism of you as a mom, Right? One of the things that I woke up thinking this morning is no one knows your story but you. Only you know what you had to do to get in this building today. I don't know. I don't know the hardship. I don't know the depression. I don't know the darkness. I don't know what you had to overcome. I don't know if you have support at home. I don't know any of those things. But you got up. You got dressed. You got here this morning. And, and, and I want to tell you, be free from someone's criticism today. I've heard some, some stories, some of you even, even in, the, in, in the church, about when you're out in the restaurant and people are looking at you and like they're like, hey, take care of your kid or hey, do something. Let, listen, hey, man, I made it to the restaurant. You ought to just be glad I'm here. Right? Who cares if the grumpy people across from you don't like that your kids aren't acting per properly? They're not going home with you. They don't pay your electric bill. They don't go to your work. They don't go to your job. Flick that off your shoulder and go on. Right? Be free from all of those things. And number four is be present. And this is probably one of the things that, that, that you need to understand more than, more than anything else for me. My mom was present in my life. My mom worked a full-time job. My mom was a seamstress. My mom worked in sewing factories my, my, my entire life. But my mom was always there. 
When my dad worked the second shift job and couldn't come to ball games or football games or baseball games, I remember it like the, the, the only football game my, my, my stepdad ever made. I was in seventh grade. We got to play at halftime, right, the, the high school game. It was raining. It was terrible. It was muddy. It's toward the end of the game, right? We're losing seven to nothing. We're near the, we're near the, the goal line. And I don't play tight end, but that was the position I was playing. As you can see, I'm not built to be a tight end. And so my coach gives me the play. I still remember Coach Wagner was his name. Coach Wagner gives me the, oh, and by the way, we were white. That was our, our, our jersey color. That was our name. We were, we were white. There was purple, there was orange, there was white, and there was blue. We were white. So I've got the play. I go running into the huddle, only I don't stop. Because it's raining. I fall down and I slide on my back into the huddle with the play. Covered in mud. My best friend, Kenny Martin, Kenny snatches me up by the shoulder pads and like, for a long time he held the record for the fastest pin in, in our wrestling for our high school. Six seconds, fastest pin on record. And so he just like, big bicep guy, just kind of scoops me up and, what's the play? <laughs> and my, 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 my stepdad was present for that, but my, my mom was there present for all the other games. All the other times I didn't get into play. <laughs> right? Anyone, anyone else in here, not a starter, anyone else in here ever had to split the innings with somebody else, some other kid that played left field? Or is it right field? Right field. That's the one that's the least popular, right, in Little League. So, yeah, had to do all of that. My mom was present. Be present. There's going to be a time you're going to come in your house and your child is going to do something annoying. And they're being annoying, right? And they're on your last nerve. The one your husband's already been playing. Ding, 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 ding. Right, your last nerve right there playing that note. Ding, 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 ding. It's like Chinese water torture. Ding, 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 ding. In that moment, I'm going to ask you to take a deep breath and assess what's really happening. And if you got to stop, if you got to turn off the stove, whatever you got to do. Maybe you guys have seen me do this in church from time to time. If it's a little kid, if, it, if they're small, get down on your knee, look them right in the eye, and say, Mom's here. It's all they need. It's not really what they're going through, but it's what you just saying, I'm here. And, and, and for, for, for foster moms or, or grandparents who've become Moms again, and all, all of that. I mean, thank you, but don't miss the moment. You'll miss plenty of moments. There, there'll be times in your life that they'll go through things and you won't be present. But in the moments you can be present, be present. Don't just be physically present. Be, be spiritually present. What does mom need to do right now? Is it just listen? Is it hug? Whatever it is. Just provide that moment, and you'll be glad. You'll be glad you did. Next, I want to tell you to be at peace. Be at peace in the storm. Whatever the storm is in your life right now, be at peace. He is with you. Whatever the struggle you're going through personally, be at peace in the struggle. He is with you. Even if everything is going right in your life and all of the situations and circumstances of your life are like the stars, they are aligned perfectly, be at peace. Be at peace. Next, I want to tell you to be loved. Today, let your 
husband, your significant other, your kids, your family members, your children, whoever's around you, let them love on you. Don't brush it off. Don't push it away. Don't be embarrassed by it. Let them love on you. For you are genuinely and truly loved. Let your kids love on you. Back in the, in the kids' church, there are some kids that are outright making you the ugliest gift you have ever seen in your life. They're not taking directions. They're gluing it in the wrong place. Right? They may even be running up and down the hallway. We don't know. Right? Because the camera's not showing in this room. I mean, somebody's watching the camera, but it's not showing here. And they're going to give that to you. And they're going to say, look, Mom, I made this for you. Right? I don't know anything that I ever made my mom that she didn't love and that she didn't have still when she passed. Me and my siblings. You know, like the hand turkey, right, from elementary school. And why they had kids make ashtrays back when I was in school, I have no idea, but we made them, right? In shop class, put them in the kiln. Here, Mom, here's an ashtray. My mom didn't smoke. I mean, what? I, mean I don't know. Just, was that a northern thing, or did they do that here, too? Northern thing. Okay, I'm hearing somebody say north. Okay, I'll, I'll wear that. That's fine. They do it here? Okay. I guess if you got them, smoke them. I guess that's what they're saying. I don't know. Teaching kids, I don't know, maybe, maybe Marlboro paid for the clay. I don't know. But I'm telling you, be loved means receive the love from others today. Every other day, they're going to be gnawing at your heels. They're going to be wanting you to serve them. Let them do something for you once a year, right? You're an extraordinary mom. Let them recognize that. Let them honor you for that. Let them love on you for that. Pastor Ruben, you can come. We're getting into the home stretch. Now for the last two, last two points. These are funny. But it's serious at the same time. The next thing I want to tell you today is be the queen of your hive. I'm not saying you have to remind them. Right? I'm just saying every other day of the year, your kids probably aren't going to take a bullet for you. They're not going to be the worker bee and say, save the queen, save the queen. No, they're selfish. <laughs> but today, today's your day. Today you are the queen. And today everyone gives themselves for you. It's your hive. Be the queen of it. I, you want, if you got a tiara at home, put it on. I mean, maybe your kid's got one back in the room. I'm telling you, just if you need to remind your husband, look at him. You need to take, hey, I'm the queen today. The kid throws up after eating the food. Say, I'm the queen today. <laughs> Queens don't clean up puke. That's somebody else's job today. I mean, if you want to sashay through your house, you just do it. I, I'm telling you, be the queen today. Let everyone know. Today is my day. <laughs> I get one day a year. Because my birthday doesn't count because most of the time they forget what that is. <laughs> Today is your day. Be the queen of your house. And in all of that, in all of that, be as sweet as the honey on your biscuit. Every lady here, whether you're mom or not, we want you to take one of the little jars of honey. It's local honey. We've had it all canned and put together for you. You got a little honey dipper in there. And we want you to have that reminder. Like I said earlier, on every jar, there's a little tag. And I believe that the one you pick up is going to be the one that encourages you today. Whatever that 
attribute of motherhood is. Maybe it's one you're great at. Maybe it's one you're not so great at. But it's the one that God wanted for you. How many jars do we have? Yeah, 66. So I think we got, we got plenty of jars then for everybody to have one. But seriously, we've had, we've had a lot of fun, and I feel like this is what the Lord wanted me to do. And matter of fact, I kind of like this better than my revival mom message. Had a lot of fun, had a lot of, at the expense of your spouse and kids. But truly, truly, be sweet today. I don't know, maybe you don't like honey on your biscuit. Maybe you're a grape jelly person. I don't know. But I particularly like honey on my biscuit. So be as sweet as the honey on your biscuit. Happy Mother's Day. All of us here at North Elliott, we love you. you'll stand with me. Father, thank you for all the moms, everyone that's here, a mom, a mom-to-be, grandparents, foster moms, mother types, surrogate moms, every type of mom known. Thank you for them. Thank you for their life, their sacrifice, and their gift of love that unconditional love for loving me first and then loving me forever. Thank you for that. Thank you, Mom, for that. Now I bless each mom into her own day today that she takes all of these things and all of this encouragement with her and enjoys the blessing of family. I pray that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Grab your biscuit, put some honey on it, take your honey jar, get your picture at the photo wall with your family that are here. God bless.